Welcome back to Microsoft Access 2010 Beginner Level 1. For more free lessons on Microsoft Access, make sure to subscribe to my channel and visit my website at accesslearningzone.com slash YouTube. In Lesson 6, we'll begin entering data into our customer table. Let's go ahead now and enter in some records into our customer table. Take your mouse and double click on the customer T. That'll open up the customer table right over here. This is what we call data sheet view because it looks like a big spreadsheet. So in Access they call it a data sheet. Now the first field that you notice is the customer ID. And you see the word new in parentheses. That's our auto number. As soon as we start typing in a record into this row, that new will change to the next available auto number, which should be one. So I'm going to press tab to move over to the first name field. I'll type in myself, Richard, and notice as soon as I do, my customer ID becomes one. I'll press tab again, last name, tab. I'll type in my company name, Access Learning Zone. Now notice that even though the column is pretty narrow, all the data will still type in there. If you want to make this wider, you can just click and drag this little boundary here between the two columns. See that? Click and drag. If you move your mouse over it, you get that double pointing arrow, just like in Excel. As a shortcut trick, you can also double click right here, and that will resize the column exactly as wide as it needs to be to fit whatever data is currently in it. All right, I'll press tab again put in my address, let's say PO Box 101, tab, City of Amherst, State New York. Now I'm going to just abbreviate my states with two characters. Yes, you can make this a drop-down box. I will teach you how to do that in a future lesson where you can pick from a list of states. That works great if you only have customers from the United States and maybe Canada. If you're dealing with other countries, I'll also show you a technique in our advanced classes where you can pick the country first and then only see a list of states or provinces from that country. That's a more advanced technique. We'll talk about that in time. For now, just type in a two-digit state. Tabbed my postal code or zip code here in the U.S., 14226. Tab. Now the country field I'm going to leave blank if the customer is in the United States. I would say 90% of my customers are in the US and that's just fine. If you want to leave it blank, that's okay. If you want to actually type the country in there, that's fine too. I'll press tab. Email address, I'll type in richard.rost at amicron.com. Notice how it comes in as a hyperlink. Again, I'll widen out the column by double clicking right here. If I were to click on this right now, notice the little finger that would launch my email program. Usually Microsoft Outlook if you're using Microsoft Office or whatever other email program you happen to have installed. For my website I'll type in www.accesslearningzone.com and press tab. Again I'll widen out that column and once again if you click on that link it should launch in your web browser. This brings us to the phone number field now, personally, I like typing just the digits into a phone number field. Here in the U.S., it's a 10-digit number. Three for the area code, a three-digit prefix, and then a four-digit suffix. So, for example, 716-555-1212. Tab. Do not type in any parentheses or dashes. Just type in the raw data. Later on, when we get to formatting, I will show you how you can format that phone number to appear however you want in your forms and reports. For now though, just type in the numbers. This brings us to the num employees field. I'll type in two and press tab. For the discount rate, let's say I give myself a 50% discount. I'll type in 50% and press tab. Now notice what happens. In Access, just like in Excel, percentages are considered fractions of 1. So if you type in 50%, you get 0.5. If 
you type in 25%, you get 0.25. 100% is equal to 1. So you can either type it in that way, or type it in as, in this case, 0.5. Again, later on, in a future class, when we get to formatting numbers, I'll show you how you can display that as a percentage in your tables, queries, forms, and reports. Moving on, we have the customer sense field. In here, remember, this is a date time field. You can type in either a date or a time or a combination of both. So I could type in 11, 15, 11, like that, and I get 11, 15, 2011. I can type in 4, 15 p.m., and I get that time. Or I can type in a combination of both. I can type in 11, 15, 5 p.m., just like that. Now, I get all those number signs because the column is too narrow to display all that information. So again, I'll widen the column out, and there you can see all the information. Now, that is the default way in which Access displays date-time fields. Again, when we get to formatting, I will show you how you can create a custom format to display that however you want to. For customer sense, though, I don't think we need a time on that. So I'll just type in, let's say, 3190. One of the nice new things in Access 2010 is the added date picker. This little calendar control right there. See that little box that looks like a calendar? Go ahead and click on that, and you'll see a little calendar opens up. You can scroll through the months right here. You can pick a day by just clicking on it. You can also jump right to today's date. And there it goes. So you can use this to pick whatever date you want. Now, a few quick notes on dates. First of all, in a future class, I will teach you how to set a default date. So when you create a new record, it can automatically insert today's date for you. That's a little more advanced. We'll talk about that later. The second thing, if you just type in a month and day, Access will automatically default to the current year. It's currently 2011. So if I just type in 314, I get 314 2011. If you type in a two-digit year from 00, 00 to 29, Access will default to 2000 to 2029. If you type in a two-digit year from 30 to 99, Access will default to 1930 through 1999. So if I type in 1145, I get 1945. If I type in 1112, I get 2012. The cutoff year is 29. Now you can change that year if you want to. It's in your Windows control panel. It's not part of Access. It's in the regional settings portion of the control panel. Next we have the credit limit. I'll type in $2,000. Notice that Access will automatically format that as a currency for me. Is active is a checkbox. You can either use your mouse and click there, or if you're a keyboard person like me, I hate to stop and have to grab the mouse when I'm doing data entry. You can just use the space bar to turn that box on or off. Next, we have the notes field. You can type just about as much information in here as you'd like to. Rick is a swell guy. Now, notice when I press tab, I'm done with that record and Access brings me down to the next blank row where I'm all set and ready to type in the next customer. Now a couple of quick notes before we type in any more customers. First, down here on the bottom, here's the scroll bar. We can use this to scroll left and right because you can see all the data takes up more than one screenful. Now the notes box right here, as you can see, you can type a lot of information in here you might not be able to fit it all easily on the screen. So there's a little keyboard trick I want to teach you. It's Shift F2. Shift F2. That means to hold down the Shift key and press the F2 key across the top row of your keyboard. When you press Shift F2, this zoom window opens up. And you can come in here and type as much information as you want. And then when you're done, hit OK and that gets saved back inside that field. You can do that for pretty much any field, but it works extremely well for notes fields. 
when we build our forms to work with this data on the screen, we'll make our notes fields much larger so you can type more information into them without having to hit Shift F2. Again, keep in mind, when our database is built, we're not going to be using the tables to enter and edit data. You never want your end users directly working with your tables and queries. You want to keep them limited to just forms and reports. So we'll make a notes field big enough on our form so we can easily edit it. Right now, we're the developers and we're working on building this database. And personally, I think it's easier to build your forms and reports if you already have some sample data in your tables. So that's why we're typing in some sample customer records before we build our forms. Now this click to add column over here is where you can optionally add additional fields to your table. I don't like using it. I like going back into design mode to do that. Remember, you can easily switch back to table design mode by clicking on the view button up here or drop this down and pick design view. But I'm just going to come down here, scroll back over to the left and enter in my second customer. Make sure you subscribe to my channel right now. And also, don't forget to visit my website at accesslearningzone.com YouTube for more advanced lessons and other specials just for YouTube viewers.